welcome to Dice Camera Action, a D&D show where my face is way too low on the screen. I'm going to move backwards. Yep, up. Oh, there we go. There we go. Welcome. So I'm DMing today, whether this is good for everyone or not. <laughs> but anyway, this is my Chris cosplay, but I'm going to take it off in a second because it's I, I get too hot wearing hats. I feel like I'm being attacked. Um, but anyway, so welcome. Aren't we excited? So I am here with the Chicken Foot Coven, as uh, you've seen in previous episodes, which is very exciting. Um, we have Deer in a Hall, the Shatter Kai Warlock, Critter, the Kobold Rogue, and Perlock, our Loxodon Cleric. And uh, so this episode is called Strix's Staff, and we're going to find out why shortly. But first, I want to let the Chickenfoot Coven do a little bit of explaining as to what their everyday adventures are like. So we have been, as the, the Waffle Crew has been a mess recently, and half the house is blown up. Things are extremely bad. <laughs> Um, so I would just like the chicken foot coven in between getting, uh, knocked out by the black viper and all the terrible things that have happened. What have you been up to and what have you been contributing to the coven uh, recipe wise? Um, you know, like just, just pretty much what have you been up to while the rest of us are destroying things and making huge mistakes? And we'll start with, we'll start with Perlock since you're in that corner. We're going to go you know, this way. <laughs> Yeah. Perlock's still like, he's basically like Belle in the opening of Beauty and the Beast, like every morning going to the marketplace, like greeting everybody and like super happy despite all this like crazy stuff that's been happening because he thinks that that's normal. Um, the whole point of like his, his journey coming here was to learn uh, like things beyond his own world. Um, but yeah, his, his first contribution to uh, like the the, the actual business itself was his bread pudding recipe that he was known for. Um, but with, after he finally wore down Warrington Munt and became good friends with him only to not long after lose him. Uh, yeah, that was a, yeah. before this started, I said that there's a weekly chicken foot coven meeting. Um, like usually to update on who's died, what horrible things is ha have happened, who's possessed, uh, what party members are having an existential crisis, et cetera. Um, and so that was a rough weekly meeting and they have a board in the kitchen that says, you know, it says, uh, incidents since horrific trauma and it's just zero every day. So, yeah, the Perlock just keeps erasing it and just probably crying a little. <laughs> yeah. So his most recent offering is like a tribute. Uh, it's a month cake, which is. Oh no, yeah. that's so sweet. It's, it's sort of like a, like an English spotted dick, like a, a pudding kind of cake. Uh, but it makes him think of uh, Warrington Munt. It's got smoked apricot, bourbon soaked currant, and <sighs> uh, black pepper citrus glaze, just to make that oh, like, powdery. That sounds um, lovely. Yeah. Well, that's just incredibly, incredibly pleasant. Strix will just shed a tear every time we have that cake. Um, so what about you, Critter? What have you been up to? Uh, I don't think Critter is uh, nearly as happy-go-lucky and go into the market as Perlog, Perlog is. Uh, I think he goes at night and tries to tries to find things worth uh, baking into pies, most of which is like uh, like rats or rabbits or pigeons and things like this. And a lot of times, like, I think his, his meat selection probably gets uh, vetoed. Uh, and, uh, well, we, we do have a, a large array of customers who might prefer, uh, you know, stranger meats. So that's true. That's true. He probably one guy also, was eating people. I mean, yeah, I mean, he probably also spends time catching the crickets for the special cricket pie. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big fan of that. And I think he, uh, he hangs out in the kitchen a lot and like moves, uh, help, helps, helps everybody else cook by like mage handing food around the kitchen as he sort of sits on top of a cupboard, uh, stuff like that. But he'll go out and, uh, he, he, I think he probably has a really good shrimp pie because he goes out and gets a whole bunch of, of shrimp, uh, from the, the dock ward area and stuff. Oh, like, that sounds good. Through the, through the uh, sewers and stuff. Shrimp pie sounds good. Um, interesting. Yeah. So maybe there's like a special pie that Critter makes. That's just like the Critter pie or something. And it's just filled with like maybe shrimp and crickets and rat meat and just like whatever. Yeah, it's probably just, it's like terrible, but like maybe, maybe like an occasional goblin customer or something weird like that. We'll buy it. I don't know. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. 
all right, what about you, Dierna? So um, I think Dierna Hall gets up like really early and will feed like leftover pastries to like the local seabirds, like seagulls and augers and stuff, and then skateboard over to work because I can have a skateboard if I want to. You could be the inventor of the skateboard. It could just be a... I was thinking she used her platinum to get a bunch of, like, materials to experiment with and maybe, like, make a board that levitates a few inches off the ground. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) For transportation. Great. The hoverboard. Perfect. Yes. She has invented that. Snow cannon. Yeah, she just likes experimenting with all sorts of magic stuff, and she has, like, eight different ritual books. So, um... Yeah, she usually probably gets there first before anyone else and opens up and will, you know, socialize a bit with Jenks and Nat because they're the only two kids that she likes. Yeah, and I can imagine that that Paulton, like, sees her come in on the hoverboard and just kind of, like, looks at it and just, like, goes back upstairs with wine. <laughs> like, <laughs> great. Yeah. And being from the Shadowfell, Deerna Hall probably doesn't have a lot of experience working with fruits. So any sort of fruit-based pastries just confuse her. So most of what she has is, well, her flat pie, her savory flat pie with a lot of cheese and tomato and it's it's pizza. I mean, that sounds really, yeah, it's just pizza. Yeah. All right. That's, that's great. That's perfect. Yeah. And also uh, tea infused rosemary bread. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And I figured that she would have very like customers that would come in specifically for that because it sounds so good. Yeah, and she probably also once she gets to know the customers, she uses awakened mind to imitate their voices in their own heads trying to get them to tip her more. <laughs> All right, Strix doesn't know about that. <laughs> she doesn't tell anyone about it. She no. is probably the richest person in the uh, even in the Waffle Crew. I'm sure. Yeah, we and well, I mean, we have money. We just have to give it all away. Anyway, um, that's perfect. So this is a normal summer day in Waterdeep. Um, it's actually pretty warm outside. It's about noon. Um, you notice that the Waffle Crew has vacated the house. You don't know where Dia they went. He went on one of his secrety runaways. Um, Evelyn is out with the kids. They needed some time out of the out of the house, and she decided to. Um, to get out because it was such a wonderful day. Uh, The other thing is uh, in the last episode, Evelyn and Strix went to go try and catch the imps who had the the stone of galore. Um, And the, the, they couldn't find them. They got away and they noticed that the castle hunter's house was far too um, heavily guarded. So they went back. So it's actually been kind of a dour time at the waffle house because we did lose the stone. So everyone's kind of like disappointed in themselves a bit. And this has made Strix sad because when everyone else is sad, Strix gets sad. So Strix has been kind of rushing around the house doing odds and ends that you haven't seen her do before. She's been collecting big things of salt and big things of like of ash and flour and just kind of running around. And you're not used to seeing her, I guess, collecting things so adamantly. But on this particular day, on this warm, sunny, water deep day, because it is summer, I believe, still in our timeline, um, Everyone has left the house besides Waffles, is of course, sleeping in her den, besides Strix. And uh, you notice once everyone is gone, you hear her yell in the common room, it's meeting time. We have an early meeting this time. Everyone needs to come into the, I mean, there's no walls in here. So just whatever, it's a little drafty. Oh man, I hate early meetings. Still finishes up with like cleaning up his workspace so it's not being left a mess and then we'll slowly meander on over and prepare for whatever terrible news is coming our way. <laughs> yeah, usually it's a death. And this doesn't sound like the death scream. This sounds more like maybe there's a f- activity scream. You've gotten to learn that at this point. Um, since Jenny made the hoverboard, she just uses it everywhere, even inside. So she just floats on in on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Strix just watches her float in. Like, I don't know where you, I don't know where you got that, but I made that's it. fine. <laughs> I could make you one. It, it's I don't I I already have a broom. It works the same. All right, everyone, this is important. We have no. something very important to do today. Can I trust you to do something very very important? No, well, certainly, most definitely. 
And you see she's closing now using um, prestidigitation or to close all the blinds in the house. And now so it's totally dark. And she looks at you and she says, much better. Much better. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, we need some skulls. Oh, I have two bags of skulls. No, no, specific skulls. Oh, okay. So we, if you remember, we lost the Stone of Galore. We kind of need that for various reasons. And I think that the main thing we need to do is be more magic-y, more powerful. And one of the things I've been wanting to do is put, and she reaches behind her, and she has both of her staves, the one that turns into the broom and the one that is the staff of the Magi. Um, and she says, we need to put these together. And the only way we can do it is with three skulls, wizard skulls that I found and identified in the city of the dead. And I need you to go get them. Where's that? It's here in Waterdeep. You know where it is. Yes, yes, Dierna. Yes, you're raising your hand. That's very appropriate. Thank you. Why, why don't you just tie them together with string? No, that's not because then they would just come undone. It's important because then the, the black staff has one staff. I can't walk around with two staffs tied together. It's just mm -hmm. bad practice. <laughs> Mm, I don't understand. I don't even need a staff. Are there, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of rumbling in this. Okay. okay. <laughs> concerns, questions, concerns, and questions. Is this? Yes. Darren, yes. You're raising your hand. Excellent. Um, are the skulls inside people's heads right now? That's a good question. No. So, okay. That More or less, I need you to go to the tomb of the Margasters. So the Margaster family, we went to their house, and that's where we killed Strahd, but that's neither here nor there. They have a bunch of wizards in their family. And so what I need you to do is go to their tomb, and then she takes out a piece of paper, and she draws what their tomb looks like. There's a little door, and I think there's, like, two little things. I don't know. It looks like this. You need to go to this. It's like a little pyramid, and they're all wizards. And so what you need to do is you need to go into their tomb. And don't worry, I have, she like ruffles through her robes. I have a bunch of information on how you're going to be able to get in, but it's going to be complicated and dangerous. Yes, yes, Dierda, yes. Will there be ghosts? She thinks for a second. Also a good well, question. I have done a lot of research and I'm sending you during the day because we need to do the ritual uh, tonight when there's a full moon. So I'm thinking that there won't be ghosts during the day. That's my guess, right? Maybe if the tomb has Seems a sun very logical. Yeah, something uh, like that. No. Anyway, I've researched this and I know what I'm talking about. There's no ghosts mm. during the day. That's what I've, I think, unless you're a Barovia. We're not in Barovia, so it's fine. So the first skull I need you to get is from one of, this one's kind of an exiled Margaster, but I think it'll be fine. Their name is Scratch Scab Margaster. So they were turned into a were rat, and later on they were buried next to the tomb. So they have, there's a little mound next to the tomb where this rare rat is buried, and it's like the middle of the day. So you might just have to, like, I don't know, do a distraction and just dig it up. So you need their skull. Rat skull, then, right? Yeah, okay. well, Scratch Scab was a wizard, but they were turned to a were rat, so it's probably a were rat skull. Yeah. Rat skull, gotcha. Well, a were rat skull. Different, larger, much larger. Okay. That's just, gotcha. Critter, I know you want to find a rat skull, but yeah. just it's bigger. I, I mean, I have six in my pocket. Yeah, I'd, those were from the kitchen, oh. or were those from the pies? I don't remember. Uh, both. Anyway. So that's one of them. And that's outside the tomb, remember that. And it's gonna be busy during the day. So there's gonna be nobles walking around, people mourning and crying, their dead relatives and things like that. So you figure something out. The next two are inside of the tomb. So the tomb isn't that big. So you'll see a few branching hallways and things like that down below. But, oh, also don't tell anyone about this because I'm pretty sure Dia thinks this is stealing and I'm pretty sure Evelyn thinks that this is desecration of a sacred site. And Paulton doesn't care. You can tell Paulton. But just I so like you know. That. So it's cool. I tell yeah, Paul everything fine. already. Okay. When he's asleep or when he's awake? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, the last skull, or sorry, the second skull, not the last skull, I'm just confused. The second skull is from Lady Silva Margaster. She was an illusionist and a fashionista. So to get into her tomb, the door will be locked, but what you'll need to do is prove to her that you are fashionable enough, fashionable enough to get into the tomb. So I have this, and she holds up a bag, 
and it's all of the old clothes that were jarlaxels that came out of the bag of holding. So it's just a bunch of leather straps and like thongs and like fancy hats. And she's just <laughs> like, so you got to put these on to convince to convince Silva that you are fashionable and that's how you'll get in. And then you just, you know, open the tomb and take her skull. Yes, Deirna. I could also get my good dress from home. And you, you can do that. Absolutely. But these are for Critter and Perlock. So please enjoy these. And she just dumps all of Jarlaxle's like, like harnesses on the ground. <laughs> Ugh. Any questions? Um, how does this work? And Critter puts a thong on his head. Perfect. You're doing it great, Critter. Oh, good. All right, next. <laughs> and the last one, and this one is very dangerous. This is Mr. Smelly Paw Margaster. So he was a wizard that was polymorphed into, true polymorphed into a cat by a rival wizard, and he couldn't break the spell. But he ended up working, or ended up attempting to be a, a very, like, I don't know what happened, but the rumors are that he ended up being the cat of a very wealthy wealthy old lady and she left him everything so a lot of the margaster's fortune comes from this margaster mr smelly paw so you have to go find mr smelly paw's tomb and bring him a fish as tribute to get into the tomb and then you'll be able to take his skull oh i can get a fish no problem yep perfect i'm sure there's one in the kitchen that's old or something or there's one in your pants maybe i don't know no not <laughs> not today no all right, that is your plan, destiny. I don't know. I have to stay here and get the ritual ready before the rest of the team comes back because if they find out I'm going to do this, it might explode part of the house again. So we just really need to get hurrying real fast. Is that all right? Strix. Yes. Yeah, you look over and Perlex wearing this gigantic like bolero hat. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the pile of clothes. Good, perfect. Perlock, this is perfect. Yes, Dearna. Before we go, yes. I got you something. Uh huh. To mark the some number of months anniversary of us working here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Jenna Hall like reaches into her coat and pulls out this big clump of hair and holds oh, it to Strix. She's like, "Thanks. What's that, this?" That's some of the Black Staff's hair. Ah! <laughs> Where? Why did you take her hair? She gave it to me. I mean, that's good. We'll just make a pie out of that later. And she no, just like, that's, that's not for pies. That's for spells. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to control the black staff. I want to be friends with her. You don't need to con use it to control her. You can use it as a conduit to enter her dreams. I don't want to do I, Thank you, Deirdre. That's very thoughtful. And she just puts it in her robe. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm glad that we're all friends and that we all work together. Even though sometimes I get a little scared. Uh, yes, there are many frightening things about working here. That's that's fair. All right, I'm gonna get this ritual ready. You all go head to the city of the dead. I believe in you. And she like salutes. <laughs> like right. just scoops up the whole pile of clothes and starts leaving the room. Yeah. So, you know, you've now been left. Strix is shuffling around. You hear her yelling and dropping things and knowing like, oh, don't need that in the other room. So, uh, yeah, it is now your turn, your time to navigate your way to the city of the dead, how you see fit. Uh, uh, Critter's going to go to a manhole cover. Hey, uh, I know a faster way over there and we can grab a fish along the way. Okay. I'll meet you there, Critter. But you you don't want to come down the sewers? It, it's way faster. Yeah. Seems like I'll a pretty pleasant day for a stroll down the street. Yeah, yeah. day. And he opens some ant hole and goes down. Okay, so Critter, Critter has a preordained path that he has taken many times through the sewers, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And is going to find a fish along the way. Um, let's see. Just I'm trying to think of a good way to, like, what kind of fish you're going to get. Uh, just roll Just roll me a perception check to see see how well you do fishing down there in the sewers. It's a summery day, so it's incredibly pungent down there today. Uh, 17 perception. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. You find a nice, a nice, uh, possibly a large goldfish someone has flushed down their toilet. 
uh, on this summery day. Maybe they thought they were dead or maybe they are dead. I don't know, but you find a nice large goldfish. I think it's still alive and he picks it up and smacks it against the wall a few times until it's not anymore. Cool. No one likes that. (laughs) (laughs) He does. All right. So you all make your way down the bustling streets of Waterdeep. Uh, There's bards playing and it's, it's again, a beautiful summer day. The nobles are out fanning themselves in their large dresses and they don't, you know, they take a moment to stare at the elephant, large elephant man with the, with the fancy hat walking down the street. Um, Once you reach the city of the dead, you notice it's a big, massive cemetery full of marble and and stone monuments and graves and things like that. But there's a lot of people enjoying it kind of park-like because it's so nice today. So now you've reached it, there's a, there gosh, there's just about someone on every corner. And so you have to go navigate your way to the Margaster's uh, tomb, so to speak. On the way there, could Deirne Hall just have swung by her place and got her good dress? Yes, absolutely. Because she's faster because she's got a skateboard. Yeah, yes, absolutely. All right, so you all meet at uh, one of the manhole covers, which you assume Critter will just scurry out of. Pops out the goldfish. I got the fish. Splendid. I'm very proud of you. All right, what do you do now? Is it easy enough to find this mausoleum based on that rough draw? No, Strix, Strix gave you a cruel... A cruel, a crude yeah. drawing. So you've managed to find it. And so now you're outside of this pure, pyramidal white marble monument with two little horns sticking out of it. I think first things first is find that mound and get that were at skull. <laughs> I'm prolax busying himself, like just putting on a random manner of clothing. So he's got like this. <laughs> This mauve, like, feather boa type thing that's got, like, some dangling, uh, like, paws on the end of it. And oh, then, like, yeah. suspenders that are a floral pattern. <laughs> Perfect. Just no fashion sense whatsoever, but <laughs> give it a good shot. Well, you notice if a, a noble couple uh, walks by you arm in arm and, and the, the man looks at you and goes, Oh, good sir, you look excellent, and just continues. Wow, so you really know getting... a lot about fashion, Burlock. Yeah, didn't you hear that gentleman over there? He says I yeah. look excellent. That's, and then that's... you hear you hear his his partner go, "You're not wearing your glasses." Sherlock, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are being you are you have crafted a very striking appearance for yourself. Oh, thank you. That that is great to hear. It it could use a little adjustment though. I can help you with that though. Oh, I welcome your input. <laughs> She'll basically just like adjust things a bit so it all like makes sense and then we'll use a manner of spells to make the colors not horribly clashing. <laughs> Perlock is finely dressed, but in a gaudy way. Yeah. I picture one of those like Renaissance like cravats, like a ruffly, like yeah. Yeah, way over the top. Yeah. It's like, you, you did a good job expressing yourself, so I didn't want to change too many things, but I kind of just sort of neatened it up a little bit. Yeah, he pulls it on. Yes, it's a, quite the learning experience, I see. Mm. Hmm. If only they were made to fit you. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you all give me a perception check to see if you see uh, the mound of scratch scab margaster. Did we bring shovels? 30, 20. You sure didn't. No. <laughs> I got a dirty 20. All right. What about you, Prolog? Uh, 13. All right. Dearna, you notice that on the right side of this mausoleum is definitely a large mound of rocks. And what you can see is what seems to be is small scraps of food, maybe left as some kind of tribute to whoever is buried there, littered around it. Um you did not bring any shovels and it is an incredibly busy day here in this, uh, in this, this park slash, um, cemetery. So digging around in this burial mound might look a little suspicious. Okay. So critter, there's the pot mound. You, yes. I think you would do the best at digging it up. Um, Jirna reaches her bag it. and pulls a Kenku skull out. <laughs> Use this the beak on this to dig. Okay, I grab um, it and look at it. She takes out like another skull and puts down. it on his head. 
this, this will help you blend in. And Perlock and I will run to scratch the distraction. Okay, perfect. I can't yeah. see anything through the skull, but <laughs> perfect. Just move taking... it so you can see through the eye holes. <laughs> it's like yeah. awkward and hard for him to get over the right spot, and then it gets caught on the thong that's already <laughs> over his head. And he just keeps. Perlock's got his hands at his hips and like is looking like this ridiculous mannequin. And <laughs> how do you propose we? Provide a distraction. Do you know any particularly entertaining magics you could put on a show? I I'm not an entertainer, really. No, but I I appear to be. I, I was turning heads earlier. It could just be uh, strolling through and showing off the summer fashion. You you hear suddenly as as Critter is trying to walk over to the bound here. Oh my God, that dog is wearing a skull on its head. Look how cute it is. And you see a noble in a big frilly dress start to walk over to Critter. Come here, little boy, come here. Oh, I want to scratch you, you're so cute. I look, I look up at her and go, yeah, I am fucking adorable. <laughs> oh my God, it talks, how sweet. And she, can you, <laughs> can you give me a, uh, <laughs> um, Actually, a strength athletics check to see if she <laughs> yeah. grabs you. Probably. Nine. <laughs> yeah, she picks you up. No, no, no. <laughs> Carter's been no, picked no. up by this Blades noble lady. Kicking. She yeah. looks very strong. She's like a, a, a large, you know, wide-shouldered lady in a, in a massive flowy, flowy, like, green and brown dress. And she's just like, look at this. Oh, I think he's a pug. I love uh, pugs. I, I'm not a pug. Oh, put me down. No. I need, I need oh, to dig. Oh dear. Darren Hall drifts over on her board and is just like, unhand my service animal. Oh, I'm so sorry. Service. Can you can you persuade her to? Can I intimidate her? Yes. <laughs> She's like, this couldn't possibly be a service animal. This is a purebred. It's a purebred <laughs> service animal. And Ooh, if you do not put it down, I will command him to bite you because I need him to connect me to the ground or else I will float away. As you can see, I mean, I'm floating. He's wearing such this adorable outfit. Look at this little Yes, yeah, so I dressed guy. him like that. <laughs> By right, the way, I got a 21. Oh my God. Yeah, she's, she's just like, I am so sorry. This is clearly your, your most valued bet. And she puts down Critter and she looks at you and says, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, and she just wanders off. You think she was drunk? <laughs> I think Darnay is very used to dealing with drunk people at this point. It's true. It's true. Um, Critter, you're no longer nice grappled. That's good. <laughs> I go back to digging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy for you to move some of the rocks. As it starts getting deeper, you notice that, that the, the dirt's a little bit harder to dig through. So you're still, you're still doing your best. It's going to take a little bit longer, though, and you notice a few guards walking down the path towards you. So... They're going to be there in about two minutes. Uh, Thingy is being very inconspicuous. He looks up, sees the guards, looks down, looks back up the guards, looks down, and then just starts digging way faster. <laughs> Can you yep. go the guards and intercept them? Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Perlock's also heading straight towards them. So now there's the two of us. All right. Yeah, you walk towards the two, the two guards. Um, they're just talking amongst themselves. They're like, yeah, I don't know. I think Todd's an asshole sometimes. You know, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know Todd? Uh, the, the guard looks up and she goes, no, not really. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if he, if he did, I would be very, I'd be happy to have any sort of information about him because he's sort of been like hitting on my friends and... And I don't really have like a judge of character on him, but he seems kind of like, eh, and I want to know how worried I should be, you know? This guard suddenly perks up and it's like, oh my God, he hits on everyone. What is wrong with him? Why is he always hitting on people? <sighs> and they're clearly ready for gossips so or like, tell me everything you know. Do you know, we'll engage in gossip, but since she doesn't actually know Todd, she's just going to mix <laughs> in secondhand things she's heard from the Waffle Crew, which okay. a lot of, Things from Paulton mostly about him complaining about Todd and also just lies. Okay, all right. So now we're sp you're spreading all this these horrible lies about Todd to the city guard. 
Okay. What are, what, give me three lies. The most extreme lies you've told about Todd. Um, in this conversation while Critter is still digging furiously behind you with a skull. He never wears underwear. Oh my God. Disgusting. <laughs> Bear um, back. <laughs> Commando. That's right. Commando. He, uh, hmm. He never brushes his teeth. Ew. And Why is Todd so gross? Oh, is this the Todd who eats the critter pies? Uh, Ew, yeah. and he eats crickets. Yeah, he eats crickets. All right. All the while, Perlax put himself between the guards and the mound behind them, trying to use his bulk to provide a medium amount of cover. And uh, Dune just being her charismatic self. It's good. All right, so now you've told these lies to the city guard. Um, they seem pretty satisfied about this, and they uh, they they continue on walking. Are you gonna just b- walk with them to block them from seeing Critter as they walk by the the tomb? Yes. And I'm gonna walk on the other side so that they keep looking in my direction, and I'm going to start informing them about the wonderful bakery we work at and try to promote as, the business. As soon as, as soon as you say that, you're like, the, the guard is like, oh, the one that blows up all the time? Well, yes, but there is a good reason why it's still in business, despite that. The food is amazing. I've never been there because I keep being told that some of the pies have crickets in them. Only the best ones. <laughs> Who said that? No one. No one. <laughs> Um, there is, we, we attempt to um, cater to a wide variety of clientele, as Waterdeep truly is the grand melting pot of Faerun. Yeah, when you say that, the other guard perks up because of all of this sudden nationalism. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yes, it's so true. It's the gem, the gem of the Sword Coast, blah, blah. And he just like starts going off on it about how how great Waterdeep is and blah, 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 and how it's got, you know, the Yawning Portal is just so iconic and, oh my gosh. And Deirdre just gives the other one a hand pie. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Yeah, she will take that. And uh, by then you've passed the tomb and uh, they say, oh, have a wonderful day. Maybe we'll go to that uh, bakery one day. Maybe we'll stop by. You know, is it is it currently intact? Do you know? <clears throat> It is intact enough to not violate any of the Baker's Guild's codes. Oh, good. We have to keep on the uh, excellent, the the, per, the the Baker's Guild. It's like you you know that the, the bakery is not any sort of way okay with the Baker's Guild, nor has anyone talked to them. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, the guards continue on. Critter, you're you're almost there. You're starting to find little bits and pieces of bone. So you're still you're still digging away. You find that the last few pieces are stuck in there really, really hard. So you might need to give me a strength check or ask for help. Uh, strength checks aren't my strong suit. Uh, so I'm. I think I might. Uh, I think I'll take out uh, skewer his short sword and just start trying to like like poke around it to try to like carve carve it out he doesn't actually know how to dig very well <laughs> <laughs> all so right like maybe he can cut it like a pie okay i think that's well could that like that could still be a strength check right or like a i guess actually give me a dexterity to see if you can like dinosaur bone kind of like yeah exactly like the opening suit yeah. uh that is a, a natural 20 oh wow yeah so you you take your sword in there and you kind of you start picking around and you find the the perfect place to wedge the skull out and you pull out this like football sized wear rat skull uh, from from the inside of the dirt. Aha! Uh-huh. I I found it. It turns out I don't even know if the guards are still there. <laughs> no, like, no, they they, they continued, but you do notice that the the noble woman who had picked you up is still kind of eyeing you from one of the other tombs towards the left and she's just like oh he's so cute this makes me uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> i just take it over to perlock and like hold it up to him which is probably like what shin height 
I'll reach down and grab it. And it's probably that he's like just palming it at this point. Hmm. Intriguing. Now Very I'm... well done. Is that noble woman still around? I mean, she's just watching from one of the other tubes, like just just eyeballing Critter, thinking that 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 he's some breed of dog she's never seen before. Can Dear Night Hall use awakened mind to stay say into her head? I think I left the stove on. Yes, uh, she'll do that and try to like get her to leave. All right, yeah, she she she's like, oh, my my biscuits, and she just like takes off running. Baskets. Ugh. Uh, so the noble woman has been dispatched. You've noticed that there's been a lull in people. Um, it's probably just about, I don't know, what Waterdeep doesn't call it noon or peak, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's starting to get later in the afternoon. Um, and you are now faced with this, this tomb and the door, which you haven't tried to open yet. <laughs> That'll be interesting. That's a big uh, well, door. Perlock? Yeah. Perlock, like, again, just the most direct person will just reach for the handle and try to pull it open. <laughs> um, so the door is locked. Mm. I got it. I'll try to, try to pick the lock. All right. Can I give help? I don't know if you can assist with lock picking unless you're uh, proficient in per it. Perlock's going to uh, place a hand on him and cast Guidance. Oh, nice. Cool. So that gives him a bonus, a right? Four onto it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Is that the dex plus proficiency? Is that how lock picking works? Dex plus um, proficiency. Yeah. So it'd be your dex bone, your dexterity bonus, and then you think you get a few more since you're proficient in it. And then an extra d4 from the guidance. Yeah. Okay. So with the guidance, it's fifteen plus seven is twenty-two. Nice. Yeah, you easily pick the lock to this, and it, it seems like it's, it obviously hasn't been opened in a very long time, so as soon as you hear hear it click, you can almost hear like an air lock kind of like psh, as the air comes out of the tomb. Mm. It smells bad. It smells right. <laughs> yeah. mm, this is a very unfamiliar smell. Really? Yes. Spend a lot of time in tombs? I think so. Huh. Well, the more you know. And he pulls the door open a little bit. <laughs> the in. hall will cast dancing lights like away from us, like good 120 feet away. So people are distracted looking away from the tomb as we okay. go on in there. All right. Yeah. So so you cast dancing lights somewhere out in the out in the cemetery and you hear a few people scream, oh, my God, it's a ghost. <laughs> They told me they are here in the daytime. And you hear like running. <laughs> and uh, do you all sneak into the tomb? Most definitely. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. You all make it inside the narrow, dusty smelling corridor in the tomb and close the door behind you. It's now pitch black. And I believe uh, Critter and Dierna, you can both see in dar the dark, but Perlock, you can't. Yeah, I just, I reach up and touch the hat and cast a light on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So your hat is now glowing. Yes. You should warn um, people before lighting lights. Yeah, your it's hat like is now glowing. Mm -hmm. And in front of you is just a descending staircase from what you can see. There's torches on the wall that you could light if you want to, but it goes down probably a good 40 feet. Do you guys mind if I do a thing? Oh, go right ahead. Deirna Hall will, um, using her hoverboard, just go down the stairs and like press the digitation all the torches on along the way. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So as you go down the stairs, are you searching? Um, actually, no. I don't. I don't need to do that. I'm, uh, give me. Who's what, who's first? I believe Deirna is first. Okay. By a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So so it's Deirna. Um, and then who's next? I think Credo will go next. Okay. And Perlock will take up the rear. Okay. And as he's like, as they're going down the stairs now, seeing what she just did, he's going to murmur to uh, to Critter. That is that was what I think they call radical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe that is indeed radical. That, that is the lingo. Is it correct? 
Uh, I think so. I hear these things in the sewers. Mm -hmm. Um, Deirna, can you give me a dexterity saving throw as you reach the bottom of the stairs? Yeah. Uh, 22. All right. As you reach the bottom of the stairs, you hear a trap set off, but because you saved, you're only going to take half damage from this trap. Uh, So the trap is fire, unfortunately. But it's a, it's just a fire arrow, so it kind of just comes out of the wall and just singes you, like, and sticks in the wall next to you. But now you know there's traps here. <laughs> ah, ah, traps. When it hits her, she just goes into a spin and just does, like, a 360 tail <laughs> All right, well, it doesn't do that much damage, so you're okay. It only does seven points of damage. But there's, now by, a fire, there's now a fire arrow sticking in the wall. Oh, as we go back, yeah. we'll pull it out of the wall. Ooh, free fire arrow. It just disappears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and your hand's kind of singed. Ow. Well, there are traps. So um, people with the best perception keep their eyes out for traps, and then Critter can disarm them. You feel like these, these um, might be... Um, I mean, since this this tomb is so old, they definitely haven't been set off anytime recently. So, I definitely need to stay alert. Um, so, yeah. as you reach the bottom and all of the torches are lit now, you're faced with two separate paths. One goes left and one goes right. Yana Hall activates her Eldritch Sight and looks for magic. Okay. Um, there is magic going down both pathways both at the end which one looks more dangerous i mean they're both magic so whichever you feel is more dangerous can you give me like a rough school of magic feel yeah the left is uh illusion and uh the right is just general general magic like just you can tell that there's just something that's like probably trapped down on the right but on the left is illusionary magic Okay, so that way is traps, that way is illusions. Which mm-hmm. one do you want, guys? I like illusions. Okay. What about you, Perlock? You got any preference? Um, I have no preference, but if Critter believes she enjoys illusions, I'd say we go left. Okay, let's go. And to fit in, I will cast an illusion myself. And she'll use minor <laughs> illusion to like make it look like there are like bats flying around us. Nice. Critter's like jumping up trying to grab them. All right, and <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, what's your what is your perception right now as you're going down this path? All of us. Uh, yeah, just give me just so I know what you're all you're, uh, staying staying I'm alert. Twenty two. Okay, cool. Best party ever. All right, as you reach the end of this hallway, you notice that there's another trap near the end. Um, you can see a thin line in the, in, the, in the stone near the bottom. So you think it could be another arrow trap. Critter will, will uh, scamper up to it and uh, investigate it and see if he can disarm such a thing. Uh, I have no idea how to disarm traps. Uh, it's just a, I think it's sleight of hand. Sleight of hand, that'd be yeah. great. 22. Sweet. Yeah, that's perp. That's just enough. You managed to move the little trip wire to the side and keep it from activating the spell. And uh, yeah, now you're allowed going to continue on your way. As you reach the end of the hallway, um, you're faced with a what looks like just a large stone door. And on the outside, written in a scroll work, it says Lady Silva Margaster. Hmm. I believe this is who we were supposed to prove to be fashionable to. Oh, is it? Well, Deirna Hall throws off her cloak and reveals her good dress. Critter throws (laughs) off his hood and reveals the thong over his head. (laughs) Yeah, Deirna has like this long white flowing ball gown and like a jacket over her shoulders with like a gold chain keeping it from falling off. Nice. Swanky. Yeah, Darren Darren looks looks good. His his glowing bolero hat (laughs) at a slight angle at this point. (laughs) Perfect. 
Uh, uh, all right. Um, yeah, so you're just faced with this door, so whatever you want to do next, up to you. Darna knocks on the door politely. Uh, yeah, you receive no response. Uh, um, Darna, I, th- I think everyone in this building is dead. That doesn't mean that they can't answer a door. Huh. Never thought about it that way. Well, she'll she'll look over the door with her eldritch sight to see if there's any like magic traps on it first. Uh, on this door, you don't you don't get any sense that there's any magic traps here. Then she will try to open the door. All right, yeah, you open the door. It creaks open into another larger open room, and in the center there's a mirror and nothing else. It's a, just a big domed kind of underground tomb with a mirror right in the center. Are you one of those cursed mirrors? The mirror does not respond. <laughs> mm, not going to tell me your secrets, eh? She's going to, like, shift up against the wall and sneak around the mirror so she, she's not catching her own reflection in it and try to get closer so she can inspect it better. All right. Yeah, Dearna is now treating the mirror as if it were a sworn enemy. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, depending on, on how this is ruled, DM, uh, Perlak does know how to cast Identify, although last time uh, Mr. Perkins ruled that it consumed the pearl worth 100 gold pieces. Uh, would Perlak have replenished that in the meantime, yes, do you think? Yes, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, you I have your, like your read. Okay. Um, so you can cast Identify on this mirror, and um, other than it having some sort of enchantment on it, you can tell it's just a regular mirror. It doesn't have any magical properties other than in what you can, what you think is just some kind of enchantment, enchantment specific to this, to this task, which is being presented with a fashionable outfit. Well, us elves are notoriously resistant to enchantment. So I vote that I will face this mirror foe. All right, so you walk in front of the mirror. Yeah. We believe in you. Uh, um, I'll cast guidance on her as I step away to let her do that. Okay. I'll go yeah. back out into the hall and watch the other direction just in case. Okay, like, so you know, like, the comes use, down. She's also probably going to use like druid craft to give her like just the right amount of like billowing in the wind and some prestidigitation so she's kind of like extra clean and thaumaturgy to make various bits glow. Oh man, can you like please just like catwalk up to the mirror too? Yes. <laughs> like sashay. All right, so so Jiren has sashays up to the mirror. Um Minor illusion some music for herself. Yeah. Looks looks fashionable AF. Um and you can see the the surface of the mirror shimmer a bit. And you notice that as you're showing off this wonderful fashionable outfit, um, you can see that it shows in the back, almost on, on near the wall, where you don't see one, you actually see an inlet where it looks like the body of the of the um, of Sil- Silva is rested, but you don't see it here. You see it in the mirror. The mirror also, in glowing letters, uh, you can see it appear at the top. Says, "Fresh AF." <laughs> I, I wink flirtatiously at the mirror. <laughs> the mirror swoons. so either the body is in that inlet over there she says pointing or it's inside the mirror yeah well well, when it's now the mirror shimmers and now it's gone and you look as the two of you perlock and critter look you can't see anything on the side of the wall but you haven't you haven't examined anything yet so you're not sure Crater, haphazardly shove your hand in that space, expecting that there's an illusion there and that you'll reach through it. Uh, Critter charges that space full force, like a <laughs> sprint. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Such a bad influence. <laughs> um, Critter, you... I'm just like, what should I... What is this like a check or like... <laughs> this is like a mess? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's stupid. Uh, I guess, give me, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I guess, yeah, an athletics check, give me an athletics check.
Um, I know. What can do about it? Help us, Dungeons and Dragons voice person. Your You're back up Wait, they're talking to me. Okay. Yes. Oh, the board just reset. Okay, we should be back now. We're back. Okay, you should be able to hear us now. It was a ghost, even though they don't come out during the daytime. <laughs> oh. Um. All right, we're back. Technical difficulties aside, Critter was jumping through a, or into a wall. Um. So Critter rolled an eleven for his dexterity saving, or not dexterity, athletics check. And that's just enough to, as you jump towards this extremely solid object, you pass through it and then crash unceremoniously into a very decomposing skeleton. <laughs> and are now just tumbled in a bunch of bones in a small inlet in the wall. Found it. I'm very proud of you, Critter. Thank you. You're a very good employee. I know. Is he invisible to us now? He is, yeah. He just it looks like he just went through the stone wall. I uh, fish around and try to find the skull of this pile of bones. Don't forget to also check the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this got this this body is actually covered in quite a bit of jewelry and things like that. So it's it's and Strix didn't necessarily specifically inform you not to steal things. <laughs> she yeah. probably should have in retrospect now that you're well, there. their skulls. Yeah, but... Yeah, he grabs eh. a skull and anything that looks shiny. If you can get me, like, a ring or a necklace, his... I would appreciate that. Just stuff in his pockets. Okay. He's got a lot of pockets, so... All right, so anything you stuff... Shiny. You stuff a few shiny baubles from this corpse into your pockets, and you find the skull vaguely attached to a spine. So as you pick up the skull, it's kind of attached to a spine. It depends It'll on if you want to take it. attached, I think, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so you take the, you Relax. bring this, you have it, and you do, you do what you will now. Relax back over by the mirror, like tilting the hat a little bit more and stepping back and posing. Yeah, the mirror is still saying things like fresh AF and work it and other things. <laughs> yeah, it's very encouraging. Can we take this mirror with us? I like this mirror. That's up to you. <laughs> Critter uh, comes back through the wall, holding a skull with the spine still attached, and like uh, his pockets are filling <laughs> with, with jewelry. Oh, you got a free spine! Lucky. Yeah, I know, right? Did you I find any like cool jewelry skull. that might work with my outfit? Oh, definitely. I throw a couple necklaces towards her. I put them all on. <laughs> <laughs> Bling! And then he continues uh, down the hallway, just holding the skull. Okay. Perlock at the mirror. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to poke get the mirror with you. Yeah, oh, the mirror is pretty big, but I, I don't think you would have a problem holding it, Perlock, if you want to take it. Yeah, if you would like this, I, I suppose nobody will be missing it. It would be a wonderful gift for um, the paladin one. Oh, yes. yeah. This, this seems quite up her alley. It does. It'll go great with the emoji shield. <laughs> Perlock will try to lift it from the wall. All right. Yeah, it comes off. You can t you can take it with you. It is awkward to walk with a big mirror, but you're you're tall and large enough to where it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Should have it under an arm now. Yeah. Besides, it was probably lonely down here anyway. It's fair. It, it will do some good in the future now. All right. Well, I suppose this is just the cat that's left. Yep. Who here is good with animals? I'm great with animals. I would like to roll insight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a contested insight. 
between the critter if you're deceiving deer now or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, 15. I got a nat one. <laughs> you, you believe you believe him. He's great with animals. Fantastic. Um, you probably got a good rapport with him having lived in sewers, right? Oh, yeah. I got pent shrimp. He loves me. Pent shrimp. Oh. <laughs> I have a familiar, but he's mad at me right now. Oh. He does not like that I am not following the Raven Queen anymore. Well, you see, the trick is when your pet starts acting up, you just eat him and then you go get a new one. <laughs> Jaren Hall summons this albino raven familiar <laughs> and asks it, I'm told I'm supposed to eat you if you disagree with me. I don't, I don't think your familiar likes that. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to agree with me or else I have to eat you. I'm sorry, it's the rules. I mean, they're your familiar, oh, so I mean, they have to agree with you. That one looks delicious. May, may I? <laughs> no, his name's Hemelig. Oh. She puts him on his head, or on her head. She puts him on her head. Perfect. All right, I mean, so you know how- never get sick of it. That, it looks like I'd make a good kebab. <laughs> Seems Curtis like been, strange advice. Kurt has been serving some interesting things to the waffle crew. <laughs> But yeah, so all the tor torches are lit in the hallway. You can make your way back or do whatever you wish. So let's go. Yes, I suppose off to find Mr. Smellypaw. Is uh, Deerna uh, leading us again on the hoverboard down the hallway? Well, at least back to where the fork was. Okay. I think she just goes like this and pushes herself off. So she's just, yeah, just totally. gliding in this pose. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so Deirna glides to the fork in the road. And uh, again, you're faced with the other one, which you can only assume is your next, your next quarry. I detected magical traps down here. So yes. Critter, you're up. All right. I'm going to start looking around for the traps. All right. I'll give him guidance. Give me a perception oh. check for those traps. And I will also give him guidance just because I can, even though it won't stack. <laughs> That's nice, though. Perception? Yeah. Five. <laughs> with, you had the D4? Guidance. Yep. <laughs> Oof. I, got, I rolled a three, got a one on the D4, and I have a plus one to perception. All right, well, Critter sees no traps. That's and... all clear. <laughs> and okay, Deirna, on, then. you hover, so you actually miss the trip line. So you go first, and Critter, you trip over both as you're trying to <laughs> search for traps. And... Two acid arrows come out of the wall at you. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so give me an, uh, another dexterity saving throw. Uh, 13. I think that, oh wait, is it dex? Hold on, let me see. Yeah, okay. I think that's, yeah, that's enough. So you're fine, you'll take half damage. So, hold on. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Okay, so that's uh, eight damage. Okay, and I'll use my reaction to cast Absorb Elements and only Ooh. take four damage. Oh, that's fun. No. That's a spell I've never seen used before. And the next attack you do will deal an extra 1d6 acid damage. <laughs> yeah, so I, had, I attack the uh, place where the acid arrow came from. Do acid that's damage cool. back to it. <laughs> That's a cool ability. Is that a is that a rogue ability or is it? No, it's a it's a spell. It's a uh, level one, uh, like wizard spell. Yeah, it's oh, an that's cool. Of course, it's a wizard spell. <laughs> um, wizards, um, arcane tricksters, and eldritch knights get it. Oh, it's an arcane trickster. That's super cool. Hmm. Wait, I've never played an arcane trickster. Anyway, we're all learning new fun things. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's really cool. All right, so acid arrows shoot. They miss Critter, and Critter casts a cool spell. It's very impressive. And then he hits Ow. the where the trap came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> poke it with a little bit of acid on the wall. It's like, yeah. aha, take that wall. <laughs> the wall's anyway, very I, I think I disarmed all the traps here, guys. It's okay. There's like a hole being eaten through <laughs> your like clothes. 
I need another patch in my jacket. All right, you continue down the path. Uh, Darren is still hovering and you reach a similar door to the other um, tomb that you entered, but this one says, Mr. Smelly Paul Margaster, written in scroll work on the front. Darren and Knox again, just in case. Yeah, you get, you get no response. Well, that means we got to break in. Or perhaps just open the door. Perlock reaches forward and just tries to open the door. Uh, yeah, the door opens easily. Ah. And as you swings open, you notice that this tomb is much different from the last one. The last one was so empty and stark. What you notice when you open this door is complete gold gilding all over the entire <laughs> entrance of this tomb. All over the walls are just covered in gold and jewels, just sparkling and shining. And in the center is a statue of a cat sitting on a golden pillow and holding one paw up. Statue of a cat? Mm -hmm. It's a golden statue of a, of a cat with ruby eyes. Maybe the, the corpse was bronzed. It's possible. Or golded. Well, this is a very fancy tomb for for Mr. Oh. Smelly Paul Margaster. You know, we we'll say in cat skull? because you. Hmm? Sorry, are we supposed to get the skull of mm -hmm. the cat? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because of her eldritch invocation, Dierne always has speak with animals going, so she's just going to say, in cat, hello cat. We are here to bring you to someplace nicer, so do not become an apparition and attack us, please. Uh, you get no response, but your party members hear you going, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Does it... Does it look like there's any place in here where there might be an actual body of a cat, like in a, you know, canopic jar or a small? Yeah. So the the gold cat is on top of what looks like a could be a tomb, something that could encase the actual body of the cat. I'm, I might be careful about moving that statue. I've heard stories of strange things happening when you move gold statues, <laughs> but I believe we're supposed to be getting under. To underneath it. But you know what else they say about story. gold hmm. You know what else they say about gold statues? They're Don't made of gold. Mm. By the way, you're still holding quiet. the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and gold is what money is made out of. Oh, is that what money is? Yes. Oh. That makes a bit more sense, I guess. Yeah. And then you can use this gold to purchase goods and or services. I'm going to scamper over to the gold statue, look around the base of it and see if it has any sort of indication of a pressure plate or anything like that on it. Okay. Uh, just give me a perception check or an investigation, whichever you feel like you're, you're investigating. Investigation would be better. That's a 10. Um, you don't notice any pressure plates, but you do notice that in front of the cat, there is a, what looks like a, a delicate gold plate. Like a, like a, like a dinner plate? Yes. Hmm. I might suggest that you leave an offering of fish upon this plate. Oh, the fish. That's right. I totally forgot. He takes out the goldfish and plops it on the plate. Thanks, Burlock. I was just going to end up eating that for a <laughs> night snack if you didn't remind me. Uh, as, as the fish touches this delicate gold plate worthy of any fancy feast commercial, <laughs> uh, the cat's paw lowers and you notice that the statue itself raises up and inside of this golden sort of... Uh, like almost, yeah, like a canopic jar kind of thing. You see the the dried remains of a cat skeleton. Well, uh, there's a skull. No reach in and grab it. You just reach in and grab it? Oh, yeah. Maybe you want to take a few other bones just in case she ends up needing more. I mean, maybe the spine will still be a dash. 
Uh, as you, this one, <laughs> holding the other hand, shaking it. As you as you pull the skull out, <laughs> you hear you hear what almost sounds like a cat hissing. Can Deer Night Hall understand what that means? Uh, yeah, you can actually. Um, and you hear it say, "You didn't wait for me to finish eating." It and wants, you notice, it wants to eat. And you notice that in the corner of the room now, there is a massive spectral ghost cat. And I need you to roll initiative. <laughs> I knew ghosts came out during the day. Critter turns around. Yeah, it goes, but they don't come out during the day. <laughs> <laughs> you now know that Strix has no idea when ghosts come out. <laughs> Dear Nahal is from the shadow fell, so she was expecting this. Yeah. All right, yeah, give me 13. your numbers. 13 for Critter. 15 for Perlock. 15 for Perlock. And 24 for Deer Nahal. <laughs> you have to roll way better than we do, man. <laughs> Just like I have my lucky dice. <sighs> <laughs> Clearly. Um, all right, well, the first to go is Deer because you roll a 24. So this ghost cat, it looks like a larger version of a house cat. And you can see the he's actually wearing a little collar that says Mr. Smelly Paw. Mm. But he's pissed. He's like <sighs> Deerna Hall hisses back at him, pulls out a twig and casts Witch Bolt. Okay. So she goes, ah, and red lightning shoots from <laughs> her hands. <laughs> All right. And to hit that is uh 23 to hit. That isn't definitely enough, yeah. Yeah, so now I do 4d12 lightning damage. Okay. That's a shitload of damage. Yeah, well, I have to cast all my spells at the next level because I'm a warlock. That's right. 17, 24, 34 damage. All right. Um, yeah, so the cat, let's see if they're immune to anything. Nope, they're not immune to witch bolts. Or no, nope. Is it thunder damage? It's lightning damage. Oh, actually they are immune. They are resistant to lightning damage, so they take half of that. Still, it's a good spell and it looks cool. So you did 35, you said? Uh, 34. 34, okay, so half of that. All right. Which is okay. 17. Cool. <clears throat> All right, okay. So the ghost takes some damage in its spectral form. And the, the lightning kind of like bounces off the weird gold gilding in this tomb and makes it, I don't know, it's kind of pretty. You know, as far as tomb robbing goes, like this is a, this is a neat experience. <laughs> you definitely are not getting paid enough though. Um, <laughs> next up is the ghost. So the ghost mm -hmm. is going to try and possess Critter. As one um, does. As one <laughs> so I need you to give me a charisma saving throw. Oh yeah, that's my worst suit. Oh no, ten. Ten. That is not enough. So you see oh, the magic. ghost cat dive into Critter, <laughs> and Critter, wow. you you now are uh, completely incapacitated. But you also just want to do cat things. So you're now possessed by a cat. Awesome. Yeah. So Critter just starts doing cat things. You play yourself as a cat. You are now a cat. Unless they can depossess you by a ghost. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. And now you're just a cat. Is so you're much? actually uh, <laughs> you're out of initiative, but Critter is now a cat. Huh. Well, I'd like to try something. Uh, Critter. Here, here Critter. And I'm gonna raise my the symbol right. around my neck and, and try to cast turn undead dead and see if it like pushes the thing out of him. Oh yeah. I think that yeah. Okay. There's like a DC thirteen the... wisdom save. Okay. Yeah, so roll I guess the ghost would roll the, the wisdom save. Let's see. Yeah, do some like Doctor Strange soul push out of the body kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So yeah, that's only a ten. So the so yeah, you depossess critter. Suddenly, critter, you're no longer a cat. A critter was holding the skull with the spine still attached and like batting at the the spine, 
and then he gets depossessed and then just keeps batting the spine. That's good. And that was, I was actually your turn as well, Perlock. So that was yeah. your turn. That's perfect. Um, so that was your turn, the initiative. So next up, Critter, it's your turn. Um, you were no longer a cat. Perlock oh. has depossessed you. Well, that was weird. Uh, is, is the cat ghost still there now that like it just sort of the cat ghost has now pulled itself back out and it's kind of just sitting above its body just hissing with its little hackles up mm. does it happen to be a cr one half or lower creature <laughs> uh it is not no okay it is a bit that would have destroyed it if it were oh no no it's stronger than that but yes cool. it would you're correct it's it's a spookier stronger ghost <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, is it, is it right up next to me? Or um, is it sort of you're far? all within about five feet of it. So you're, you're really close to it. Okay. It'll I just take out and move and stab it. See if it works. <laughs> all right. So you're gonna try and stab. Yeah. Stab uh, stab. and I have advantage cause I have pack tactics as a kobold. And I'm going to cast Green Flame Blade when I cool. do this. So. That is a 20. Not natural. To hit? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's plenty. Yeah. Okay. And Green Flame Blade at this level. I think D8. Six, six, six. Six plus four is ten damage. Uh, four of which is fire. If that matters. It does. Yes. Okay. And the rest is uh, uh, piercing, non-magical. Yes. Okay. So that's. So how much fire damage? Uh, four. Okay. So it's going to take two of that, and then how much piercing? Uh, six. Okay. So it's it's also immune to that. So it's going to take three. All right. So you did you did some damage, but it's it's a ghost. So oh, do yeah. I get sneak attack as, uh, against a ghost, or is, is undead immune to sneak attack in five E? I can't remember. I don't know. They, Actually, they shouldn't be as long as there's somebody else, an enemy, and in... yeah, as long as you have an ally within. Um... Okay. All right. Sorry. Then I'm going to roll sneak attack damage as well. Yeah. Go ahead. So sneak attack that. Fourteen. Sneak attack damage on top of the 10. It's no longer yeah. turned now. All right. Okay, cool. Which is still only 14, so it's like okay. All right. So you did you did you did a bunch of damage. It's still immune to a lot of it because um it's a ghosty. But it does look worse for the wear. It's kind of fading in and out of our earthly existence. Spooky. Um, <laughs> Take that ghost kitty. Oh, they're immune to piercing damage? I think, does that mean that they just don't take the damage? Yeah, immune Correct. means no damage. Oh. Stuff. Well, okay, so then it only took the fire damage. Okay, well, four damage. I'll, okay, yeah, but it. you did, I mean, stab it, so. All right, thank you, everyone. I'm bad at math. Okay. <laughs> um, back up to Dierna. It's your turn. Wait, so is it resistant or immune to lightning? It is resistant to lightning. Okay, well then I will maintain my concentration on my witch bolt to do another forty-six to it or forty twelve to it automatically. Cool. Because witch bolt is a good spell. It yeah. Um, two, three. Forty one half is, you know, twenty, twenty one. All right, twenty one, you said? Total. Total, okay. Yeah. After the resistance. Okay, yeah, this thing's, it's looking real bad. It is looking, but it is its turn. So let's see, I wanna see. I'm still hissing at it. We're just still hissing at <laughs> I'm trying to assert my dominance. Um, all right, each of you, I need to do a wisdom saving throw. The cat's gonna like hiss in a horrible, frightening way. I'm gonna try and scare you. Is this, yeah, it's a fear effect? Yeah. Okay, I have advantage on those as a loxodon. Oh. I got a five. I bet that succeeds. <laughs> <laughs> 22. I got a 16. Um, okay. So 
per lock and Dierna, you managed to evade this uh, critter. Oh, critter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're frightened, but you also age 10 years. <laughs> I don't know what that means for a kobold. Yeah, how long do kobolds live? I don't know. But you've now aged 10 years. Maybe you're now just like, you're like a hunched older kobold. He's uh, 25 instead of 15, so. Okay. So you're now an older, old, you feel creakier. I don't know. <laughs> it's very confusing. Um, and you are frightened. So on your turn, you may do a saving, a saving throw. Um, and the aging can be reversed with a greater restoration spell, but only within 24 hours of it occurring. So okay. now you, you know that. <laughs> You're just going to come back older, <laughs> maybe wiser. Who knows? Um, let's see. But yeah, so that's the ghost's turn. Um, next up is Perlock. Oh, we should probably leave. And he's going to cast Spiritual Weapon as a bonus action in the form of a <clears throat> just a giant, uh, like cat toy, like, sort of whip type thing and just, like, hit it. <laughs> nice. Spiritual weapon. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my spell casting attack bonus. That's a 24 to hit. Yeah, that is definitely enough. That is only four. Uh, was it force damage? Yeah, force damage. Um, are they immune to force? Let me see. This ghosty. <laughs> this spooky ghosty. No, they're not. So they take they take all four damage. Oh my god. They are really hurt. <laughs> spiritual weapon is a bonus action, so you can still cast a cantrip. Yes, uh, yes. but I have no damage in cantrips, so he will instead uh, just walk up and pull out a rolling pin and, and just smack it. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, which is 15 to hit yeah it hits and that is three bludgeoning damage all right how do you kill the ghost with the rolling pin <laughs> <laughs> just like a, like a bad kitty like you're trying to like whack it with like a magazine kind of deal like it's just like a <laughs> yeah you you whack this ghost and it's just like and just disappears and it's 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 you can see its ghosty essence go back into into its tomb, and the lid kind of just slides back on real fast. Critter's still just screaming, running down the hallway. <laughs> ah! Critter, your fear goes away as soon as the ghost is back in its tomb, and you're just down the hallway. Oh, now it doesn't seem so bad, but my <laughs> joints ache slightly more than they used to. <laughs> yeah, you still have the skulls, critter. Yes. Okay. Good. All right, you, you vanquished all of your foes. Let's is it dead? whatever else you want in this tomb. It was already dead. Is it dead again? It's been defeated. I'll take it. And I will take all its stuff. She like takes out a knife and like starts prying like gems out and stuff. But likes doing the thing where he's got his back turned on purpose, where he's like, if I don't see them do that, it's <laughs> my concern. That's fair. We need to reintroduce this uh, capital into the market. But the the spiritual cat toy is still up and just like occasionally whipping. So how many gems do I get? <laughs> um. Oh gosh. Let's see. How much stuff do I get, Holly? How much gold do I have? Okay, I'm you get eight gems. Eight, eight gems. Yeah. Nice. You get eight gems of varying, varying uh, degrees of, of riches. This goes on long enough. Perlax going to set the mirror back down, propped up against the wall, and and start like fiddling with his look again and posing while everybody else is busy doing stuff. Yeah, it's taking a while. They're just looting the tomb. Things that Strix did not tell them to do. Yeah, just doing like, like disco pose. Your locked legs, like looking in the mirror, like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is my scales always that dark of green? I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um. <laughs> so the. Yeah, the, the mirror is still giving you wonderful compliments. Um, it's still telling you look great, all those things. Um, Dierna, you, after looting the entire tomb, you get five more gems. Ah, oh, nice. And uh, I'm sure you've managed to take a couple of pieces of gold from the wall to just pocket those. Um, also, kobolds can live to be 125, according to chat, so... Um, Critter, you just feel, you feel like you're of drinking age now. <laughs> That's true, yeah. I think kobolds also, like, get adulthood a lot faster than humans, so it's, yeah. like, they're, like, a weird, like, heavy on both ends of the spectrum. That is interesting. They just have a really long middle age period. Yeah, right. exactly, yeah. He's starting to think about refinancing his mortgage. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking maybe he's going to buy a mo motorcycle. Yeah, he's thinking about buying a motorcycle. <laughs> Thinks that Dar Darna's hoverboard's really cool. Yeah, it wasn't cool before I came down here, but now it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, you're, are you finished looting? I think now I am, now that okay. I've taken everything. All right. So you have a fairly sized now, like, bag of loot with you. <laughs> and a mirror. Mm. And a bunch of skulls. This may arouse suspicion. Strix is going to be so happy. Yeah, we got the skulls. And all this extra crap. I can I can hold on to that extra stuff for you. Give her a the, decent amount of, of the jewelry, but he'll he'll keep a couple of a couple of smaller shiny things to himself. Grave <laughs> <Hey>, robbers. <laughs> Perlock's going to start heading back towards the, the entrance and try to have a peek out to see if there's anybody nearby. All right. <laughs> um, Perlock, as you lead your crew down up or up the stairs to the top of the tomb, are you going to just crack open the door? Yeah, and I'm going to, before I do that, cast silence in the vicinity to try to make sure that there's as little suspicion aroused as possible. All right. Um, so yes. yeah, you, you do that, and as you crack open the door, right in front of the door are the two guards hmm. talking amongst each other. And as soon as you cast silence, they <laughs> get com they're like very confused, and now they're kind of talking to each other and looking around. And uh, give me a stealth check so to try and see if you can close the door fast enough. Eighteen. Yeah, you do it. You close the door fast enough, the guards don't see you. Then I will drop silence. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear them. You can hear them talking outside of the door. And you hear them yeah, say... Yeah, the big ear flat to the door. Right, you're the big <laughs> ear got flat against the door. Um, and yeah, you hear them saying, yeah, this, you know, this... This lady said that there was a there was a dog digging outside of here, and they, they pulled some skull out, and then, then she saw them go into the tomb, but I don't know, I don't see anyone around here. So, you know, maybe we should go get Todd. <laughs> uh, can I, if I hear this and I know where they are, cast calm emotions on the other side of the door to try to make them feel indifferent? Uh, yeah, I think you can do that. It's a DC 13 charisma save. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do that. All right, uh, one guard is suddenly very calm. The other guard doesn't react. So one guard's like, wow, I just am really, you know, I feel really good all of a sudden. I think I'm gonna just go home and take a nap. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like there's the grave robbers in here. I know, but I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear this conversation going on. Um, so one guard you notice walks away, but the other guard is still guarding outside of the tomb, uh, kind of checking the locks, noticing that the lock has been picked and things like that. You want me to distract them? Yes, dear Nay, I think this may be your wheelhouse. Hey, um, Dierna wraps her cloak back around here, takes out her Shatterkai mask and puts it on. It's like really spooky looking. And she like uses various spells to just make her more billowy and ghost-like. Ooh. 
Then she looks through the crack in the door and then uses Blessing of the Raven Queen to teleport out. And okay. so for a round, she's all like translucent and ephemeral. And she tele- appears out and turns around to look at the god and goes, Ooh, I am a ghost and I don't like you standing around my grave. <laughs> can, can you roll me an intimidation check? Yes. While this is happening, I just like, uh, oh, we're dressing up again and puts a thong back on his head. <laughs> Six, not uh, 26. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, the, the guard looks at you and goes, ha, ah, they come out during the daytime and they just take off running. <laughs> I, you don't think the water deep's finest is, uh, is put on graveyard duty. <laughs> Nobody expects the daytime ghosts. Yeah, you also notice that a few of the uh, a few of the nobles and things around you have also taken off running. So now might be your time to try and escape the tomb. Okay, all clear. Away we go. Push through the door. All right, are you just going to run through the streets of Waterdeep with this bag of loot and mirror? Oh no, I'm going to run through the sewers of Waterdeep and. Encouraged by probably two la- large Loxodon friends and try to go into the battle. Uh, I think he will still decline, uh, but will like take off the, the 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 bundle of clothing and stuff and like put it on top of the mirror and start carrying it, looking like he's like performing a moving service type deal. Like here's just some things from a production down the street of the local theater. <laughs> Can, okay, give me a deception check to see if people are going to b- believe you as you walk down the street with this mirror. And Dear and I, I'm guessing you're with him holding the, the loot. Yes, but I'm doing rad skateboard tricks. Okay. So people think we are part of some sort of production thing. So okay. I'm uh, it's a 15. All right, that's... That's enough to, to convince the, the, the people in the street that you are indeed doing a production of uh, whatever show you, you wish. And Critter, you're, you're fine in the sewers. Nothing comes up as you usually do. You, He's you make your just way- muttering to himself, I don't understand why nobody likes going through the sewers. It doesn't make any sense. It's far superior mode of transportation. Yeah, it's fair. You smell terrible. Oh, yeah, um, it's disgusting. <laughs> so nice. And you make it back to Troll Skull Alley in front of the Waffle House with with no incidents. That seemed almost too easy. Yeah, just just <laughs> take the win. Are you going to go inside and show Strix the mirror, or are you going to keep that a secret? <laughs> oh, I will absolutely like present it and like, oh, look at this wonderful thing that maybe uh, something that evil would enjoy. Yeah, we got this for Evelyn. We had some extra time. All right, so you go in. Strix greets you, but as you walk into the into the tap room, Strix has closed all of the blinds, and in the center, there's a burning brazier of green fire, and around it is a massive, looks like what the designs on her staff, in salt and flour on the ground done up, and she's like, don't step on it! And then on each, there's three different chairs, and on each chair... There's a different symbol. And she looks at all of you and she says, I need, where's the skulls? What is that mirror? What is that? Critter has the skulls. We got this mirror for evil and that's all you need to know. Yeah, uh, I got I got skull. I got another skull that has a bonus spine attached. Okay. Um, I think I get extra credit <laughs> for the spine, yes. And then uh, I got the other one that's a rat skull. Perfect. She just insight checked you, Deirna, and she did not roll well enough. So she's just like, all right, I believe you. So she doesn't notice any of the shit you stole. I feel like this is a very common relationship for them. Like, (laughs) dynamic. Yeah, she's like, I I believe you, it's fine. Uh, All right, so each of you needs to put one of those skulls in the chairs. So who wants whose skull? Just put it in the chairs. I vote cat. The tosser of the cat skull. I'll hold on to the one with the spine. Here, you get the rat skull and hand it to Burlock. All right, I'm going to need you to hold on to all of these while I do the ritual. Are you fine with that? It might burn. I don't know if it's going to burn or not. Question. Yes. Is this going to end us up with us being possessed? No. 
Okay. Maybe. Probably not. I've already been possessed once today. It's really not that bad. No. This, You're going to have to tell me about that later. No. Did you take anything else from the tomb? Yes. Of course. This, this mirror. Well, the mirror is weird. Strix is going to go wrong. stand in front of it, and the mirror just says, Ew. <laughs> She's like, This mirror is rude. Take it away. Well, we'll get rid of it later. It doesn't matter. Um, all right. So you all sit down in the chairs with the skulls, and Strix runs <laughs> off, and she comes back, and she has her two different stabs. And she's like, you know what? I was thinking about where you said Jarda, and that was a good idea. And she takes this and she starts wrapping them and sticking them together with rope. Yeah, you got to make sure they're physically in contact so the magic takes easier. Yeah, so it's you perfect. I just done that the whole time and said the whole skull thing. The skull. You'll see what the skulls are for in a second. Stop complaining. I'm, go get yourself a snack. It's going to take me a second. Okay. And she's still like wrapping the the things together, and she's uh. She runs back up to her panic room a few different times and comes back and she's got different bits and pieces like a, an actual chicken foot, what looks like a pile of dirt, like some weird tongues. And she starts set, setting them in different places on this wheel on the ground. It looks like it doesn't make any sense, but maybe it does to her. I don't know. You're but she's taking holding, notes. Yeah, she's holding both staves and she sticks both staves into the burning brazier. It doesn't bother her because she fire resistant so she just sticks them down in what must there must be sand in there that's burning just sticks them in there and she's like all right we're almost ready but we need some pies so we need you to go get your favorite pies from the kitchen and bring them back I mean, i have these human pies and and i have the those. shrimp and cricket pie yeah you get that one dear and not the human pies we need we need or your bread your bread's very good <laughs> bring the bread okay i'll bring the bread oh we may bring any baked goods yes perlex bring- gonna go grab the uh munt cake all right, Perlock, like that one's sad, can- but that will do. Yeah, he's gonna cast protection from energy on himself and make him resistant to fire because he's a little bit nervous. That's wise. That's very wise. I, I could summon a demon, but I don't think that would help. No, don't do that. <laughs> we don't need that prop. We don't need that right now. Um, so you do you all go get your pastries. Yep. All right. Everyone goes and gets their pastries and comes back. And uh, <laughs> you have your skulls. She's like doing a checklist. Everything's laid out. All yeah, right. Familiar sit in the corner. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. You can, yeah. Okay. Familiar just flies away. All right. Ugh, should I take waffles out? No, waffles is fine. It's not going to be that big of an explosion, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, Perla, can you cast that spell on everyone here? Maybe the protection from energy, or is that just on you? Oh, this is, it's just something that I use when I work in the kitchen. I, I don't think I'm able to do it on more than one person at a time. All right, just checking. All right, so she, she stands up. So there's four chairs. There's the three that you're sitting on. She stands up on the last chair, and she just, like, wrings her hands together, and she's like, all right, I'm going to try and cast something on this. And if it works, then uh, they should be fused together. But it might explode. Oh, wait, hold on. She like gets off the chair and she walks up to the door and casts arcane lock (laughs) on the front door. And she's like, just in case anyone wants to come home or wants any pies, (laughs) this is fine. All right, are you ready? It's like the triangle shirtwaist factory. All right, I need you all to stand on your chair and hold your pie. And your skull. What? Wait. What? Yeah, goes to the window and turns the sign around so it says close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good thinking. This is why I think you get paid. I don't know. Do you get paid? I don't know. I Do get it? tipped a lot. That's good. Good, good, good. I'll prepare the blown up sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does Perlex chair support his weight? Uh, yes. Yeah. You're standing on Strahd von Cherovich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So Strix then holds up her own pie and you're each holding a skull and a pie. And she says, and at the count of three, I'm going to need you to smash the pie and the skull together. Mm. Are you ready? I suppose. All right. I hope this works. And she starts counting on, she says one, two. Wait, is it, no, on three or, is it on three or after three? It's on three. Okay, on three. So one, two, three. Yes. Okay. 
Also, do you think this was grave robbing? I don't know if it was grave robbing or not. Maybe we'll talk about this later at our weekly meeting. Anyway. Definitely involved a grave and robbing. Well, all right, ready? It was corpse repositioning. That's fine. All right, one, two, all right, three. And you smash the skull and and the pies together and you notice that they start to dissolve into what looks like burning more green flame that merges into the center brazier. And Strix is like, well, I guess we'll try the final thing and just cast fireball on it. (laughs) So a massive fireball erupts in the tap room. Uh, You're all protected by the careful spell. Unfortunately, the windows in the tap room are not. So in a massive explosion of green fire, the front window is blown out of the tap room again. Uh, the fire swirls all around you. Your familiar is protected as well, Dierna, don't worry. Um, and as it coalesces into the center, you notice that the fire swirls around the staff and both staffs fuse into one. So it must have worked, you think. The rope disappears and sloughs off, almost like a snake shedding its skin. And you can see it just sticking up in the center brazier. And it looks pretty much the same. It has the same crescent shape and the symbols and everything, but the the staff itself is the staff of the the staff of the Magi. So it's more sleek and neater looking. It has like a cool like um taper up to the top for staff, not just a stick that Strix found in the uh in Sigil. But uh Strix is still holding the pie. It's on fire now. And she looks at the staff. She's like, I think it worked. Look at it. It's, it's one now. Unless the other one just exploded. I don't know. Hold on. And she goes up and picks it up. And she's examining. And she's like, it worked. Look, it worked. See, you did it. Good job. The tap room is on fire. Oh, we should fix this. <laughs> I'm going to start creative destroy water and just like have it rain. And, and the parts that are on fire the most. Well, shoot, Wait, could you do this the whole time, Perluck? Well, yes. Oh, I should have implemented that the last time the house was on fire. We we have a lot of abilities in our group that have not been utilized (laughs) by you, which would have been very useful at a lot of times, but... Pretty much all of Perlock's spells were, like, kitchen-related. But you're so good at baking. That's what matters. Not to mention our grave wrapping skills. That's true. All right, let's try and clean this up before everyone gets back maybe may i add something to your staff uh i mean sure as long as it's like not more fire Diana takes out like a necklace that might like like have like an arcane symbol because they were robbing wizards and just like ties it on the head of the staff like there oh that looks nice it's dangly yeah it's always nice to have like one dangly item in your ensemble yeah, I agree. At, at one point, while Perlax putting out fires, he like immediately at one point looks startled and dashes out of the room to make sure that the hat that he found is still intact. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Without definitely cast still light on it. Yeah, it's definitely still intact. Um, you hear a knock on the door. Uh, it's it. <laughs> it's not frantic. It sounds like a questioning customer. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you open? Do you turn the sign back from op- from closed to open? Yes, and then I peek out the window as I do. All right. Yeah, you see. You, you see just a, a a couple looking for their looking for a nice meal. They just look like a a a little halfling couple expecting the wonderful pie shop that's been exploded like twenty times. I slowly open the door and say, "Hello. Are you here to be evil? If no, you may enter." And they're like, well, that's an interesting request, but yes, we're just here for pies. Okay. Well, I think it most places should have a policy of no evil occurring on the premises. It's just good business practice. That's fair. Um, but yeah, you usher them in. Um, Strix is going to go get them some pies and settle them in while you put more of the fire out. Um, a few more customers come in and mill about. Um, <laughs> the The house has one massive hole in the ceiling. The windows are now blown out. Everything is charred. Um, the brazier is still in the center. Strix comes in with a piece of wood and just puts it on top of the brazier and it's now a table. So, and she sets another customer on it. 
Um, but she comes out, <laughs> she comes out and she kind of looks a little like she's still holding her staff and she just looks a little thoughtful and she says, you know what? I haven't praised you enough for helping me. You've really made this something special. And I think that the people here like coming here and they like what you make and they like what I make. And I think that's worth something. I think that you're good. And I think this place is good. Is it worth payment? You're gonna have to talk to Diaz about that, but I'm gonna pay you in something nicer. And she reaches into her robes and she pulls out a few different things, one for each of you. And uh, she she looks at you, Dierna, and says, this is for you. I think you'd like it the most. It's a jar of ghoul tongues. And I want to give it to you. And she hands it to you. Dierna snatches it. <laughs> Careful, though. I think they wiggle around a little bit. Um, Even better. This is the best day ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so she hands you that. Dierna um, will give Strix a hug. Oh, she responds in her awkward, her awkward way. Um, and she's going to exchange gifts and we are in a cup and we are now legally sisters. Yay. Strix is like, I have a new grandma, but I'd like a new sister. My brother is awful. Then I shall say important. <laughs> she just like takes out a knife and like, where is your brother? Oh, you don't, I think he's in the shadow fell. I don't know. Oh, we'll kill him one day. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back there. No, don't go back there. Um, she's gonna, she's going to go up to uh, Critter, and hand Critter a. Uh, oh my gosh! Oh, this is perfect. Critter, you're going to get a, <laughs> a pipe, that that. Uh, oh no, no, she was going to get that perlock. I'm sorry, Critter. You're going to get a book of Barovian nursery rhymes. So she's going to hand it to you and say, Critter. I feel like you might have a better life if you become literate. <laughs> I mean, it might help. I actually can read, but I just don't much. But I like this book. Are there pictures? It's just there are plenty of pictures in it. Oh, look at that picture. Yeah, and she and she hands she hands him the book and and says, "Why do you look older? That's that's really weird." I got scared by a cat. It was a day ghost. <laughs> I, but ghosts don't come out during the day. I thought we had that conversation. They do. You just weren't listening. Everybody in that strange park thinks that they do come out during the day. That's for sure. Oh. They, they do come out during the day. You just weren't listening to me. I know all about ghosts. That's that's fair. Oh, one more thing. And she like reaches into her bag and she gives Critter her varnished basilisk's eye. If you don't want to read, you can just like chew on this. Oh, he pops it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. You know, what can you do? Kobolds, right? Anyway, Perlock, for you, I have a very special thing that I once gave um, to, who's the guy that had the ring of winter last? I don't know. We killed him and I took it off his body. But anyway, it's a pipe that, that's a little skull pipe that when you blow into it, it makes little skulls. You don't have to smoke anything. It's just like a novelty. But I figured that that would be fun because where you come from, it's like all magic-y and stuff, right? Yeah, indeed, and I'm I'm touched that you would offer something with a personal touch to it. Thank you very much. And you see his eyes get a little bit misty. Oh, also thank you for Incredible. making the the munt cake. Every time I eat one, I feel extremely guilty. Oh, was that the cake that you made out of Warrington munt? No, not out of. That's not. Oh, that's not maybe, what that is. maybe that was just a dream I had that one time. It's it's only it's just it's nice. That's right, artist Simber. That more was his as a anyway. Okay. All I'm trying to say is that thank you for trusting me with your time and being here and making this something special for the people of Waterdeep. It's been a home, and I haven't had a home in a really long time. And you all have made it feel like home. And I just want to thank you. And you should probably ask Dieth for at least a little bit of money. Well, I don't really get money, but um, we want to thank you, Strix, Auntie Strix, for, you know, letting us come here and learn how pies are made. I never knew such a thing as a pie could exist. And then I found this bakery. 
And thank it's you for true. not selling me out to the Raven Queen. She would probably give you a lot of money for me. Uh, we don't ever really get a relationship with her. I met her and she was not really that nice. So yeah, she's awful. Yeah. I know that Paulton likes her, but you know, a lot of people that Paulton likes, I don't really get along with. I get along with Paulton. <laughs> I get along with Paulton, but a lot of the people, anyway, regardless, this has been a good place for all of us. And in the future, I hope that we can still continue to be a good place. Uh, and she looks over and one of the tables that the guests are sitting on is on fire. And she's just like, maybe we can take care of that. That's the s'mores table now. Just create and destroy water. So it's raining on them. I have a feeling that there's umbrellas underneath the table just for like these instants. And one of the like <laughs> patrons just sits there with an umbrella while it rains. <laughs> <laughs> and while everybody's watching that, then Perlite turns aside and he's got this giant handkerchief and you just hear this trumpeting sound as he blows his nose. Still like <laughs> from, from being thought of. Oh, and as the rain falls in the Waffle House and the coven continues to feed the hungry patrons of Waterdeep, a small home for the wayward creatures that live there will continue to fall apart until one day it will be rebuilt again. <laughs> uh, and that's where we'll stop. Yay. Hey. Thank that you. That was great, Holly. Yay, and thank you for being a part of the coven and enjoying all of these wonderful times with me. I hope you enjoyed your tiny dungeon crawl adventure into the tombs of Waterdeep. Yeah, it was Absolutely. fantastic. We got so much loot. We you did. did get a lot of loot. Please don't tell Dieth anything that you took. I don't <laughs> tell Dieth anything. You're probably wealthier than the Waffle Crew. It's point. probably yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably true. But, uh, didn't Dierne take all the money herself? Yes. She doesn't understand money and Yes. Yes, she, yes, she did. Yes. Yeah, basically. Like, doesn't even care about it. He does like his the usual shopping, and then he's like, I'm getting all this wonderful life experience. This is fantastic. <laughs> and I'm just going to say we put on. the mirror into uh, Evelyn's room. So the mirror is, or no, Evelyn's room is destroyed. So the mirror is now just in the tap room. It's just there. Whenever he's on break, Perlock's like, got the head on, just looking yeah. at himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the self affirmation mirror. So, yeah, yeah, is, the uh, waffle crew's been rubbing off on him for sure. Yeah, it's it's perfect. Um, all right. Well, if there's anything else you'd like to say about your characters, like what what do they continue doing after after this adventure? Are they still hanging out at the coven making pies or? Oh yeah, it's, I think Critter just keeps doing the same thing every day. Like he doesn't really have a concept of like future plans just life just sort of is one day at a time so yeah now he has this this new uh maturity about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> perlock's not going anywhere anytime soon he's like for him this is like short term but it's going to end up being like probably 15 years of like no ambition to move up just like doing this menial job as like a learning experience kind of thing so He'll pretty much do the same thing day in and day out for the next foreseeable future for sure. Yeah, he's just trying to find his place in the world. Yeah, just like learn yeah. a bit a little bit before it goes back to uh run the bed and breakfast back home. It's lovely. What about mm -hmm. Tierna? She definitely still works at, <clears throat> at the uh bakery, but now that she also has seed money, she is also starting an independent hoverboard selling business. Perfect. Because she doesn't sleep, so she also has time to do crime. Cool. <laughs> Can she give Jenks one of those hoverboards? Because I feel like Jenks would really like one. She she could give Jenks one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jenks really wants one, but she just continues to say no. I I think she would give it to him if she if Jenks let her teach him some magic. Okay, that's like, fair. He would let her do that. If you study enough, then you get the hoverboard. Right. And you have yeah, to wear the, a helmet. The hoverboard is just a floating disc, but just a skateboard. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. Also, yeah, besides like fashion and personality wise, the one way that the Waffle Crew has rubbed off on Perlock is that where all of his spells originally were like things having to do with fire and water and food, he now prepares every day mass healing word. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that would that's really helpful, especially since the like fifth break-in by like five different criminal organizations. 
<laughs> yes, it's it's changed his uh, his morning routine somewhat, realizing oh I should probably like <laughs> prepare for the worst. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, but yeah, so the coven continues unhindered until until the future. So why don't you all go through and tell everyone what exciting things you are doing in your life, or if you want to promote anything or talk about anything, and go ahead and chat. Yeah. Well, at uh, PAX East, I am running two panels. One two on, panels? Yes. One on transgender narratives and tabletop gaming, and the other on respectfully role-playing outside of your own identity. Uh, both of those are on Friday. So if you're at PAX East, come check them out, because they are not being streamed. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to say, hopefully people can watch them. Well, will, they're not being streamed. You got to go PAX. I will try to record them, though, and get them up in some form somewhere. Excellent, excellent. If anybody here is into collectible card games and deck building games in particular, there is a digital card game that I've been doing a lot of community moderation for called War of Omens. It just released on Steam finally about a month ago. So it's free to play entirely. You don't have to pay a dime to get anything in it. And it's pretty freaking fun. That's awesome. Yay. Uh, I don't really have anything to promote. Uh, I have a Twitter at Bro Ben Chain. Uh, you, you can go to if you want to see my uh, pointless uh, opinions about things and what's happening in my D and D campaign. Um, I mean, that's why we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it. Yeah. Yay! Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, the Waffle Crew will be at PAX. Uh, PAX East, we are going to have a show, live show on Thursday. I believe we also have a panel, I think. And our booth will be there as well. We're going to have pins and shirts and all kinds of fun merch for you guys if you want to come by and say hello. Um, so that'll be really fun. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think just PAX. And then here, not here, but on my channel, on twitch.tv slash Commander Holly, in about a half hour, I will be live with Kate Welch right next to me in person in my home. Uh, streaming Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Um, so we will be going through some of the fun little Strix and Rosie B. Stinger campaign things for that. So it'll be fun. So come check it out. And uh, yes, Kika is now spamming that link to the the uh, Dice Cam Reaction subreddit. Thank you, Kika. So if you want to come talk about this episode or future or past episodes, um, the episode at PAX is going to be DM'd by Kate. So that's going to be really fun because it's going to be a Rosie cool. uh, Bee Stinger episode and a Kate DM episode. So we're all really excited. But yeah, and if you have any anything you want to say to the Chicken Foot Coven, you can always tweet at them. And uh, this was lovely. Again, thank you all so much for being part of Strix's, Strix's staff's adventures. And now she has a new staff that I have to make. So that's fun. <laughs> Just giving yourself so, more work. I know. That's okay. Uh, I will eventually get around to it, but yeah. Well, thank you guys so much and uh, we will see you all next time. I'm not sure how this works. I think Pelham just turns it off as we start waving. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for watching and thank you for spamming yes. that link and thank you to the coven for being here and we love you all and take care of yourselves and drink water. Okay, bye. Thanks I'm going to keep waving.